Okay, so let's roll another video in our set meshes. So this is a continuation of the previous ones and we have a solution, but now let's talk about you now uh, post-processing. Okay, post-processing open phone, post-processing also Fluent. I will show you how I like to do it in Fluent, but pretty much these st steps are the same. So hopefully you didn't erase this solution. So let's post-process. So I will launch Paterphone. So I will show you how to do an app with Paterphone and then the tool I like to use, which is Insight. Um, minus built in, oh, it's a parallel mesh. So I will access to the compose solution. So now that we're here, let me go, let's do all the steps. So you saw that you read and you have the meshes like this, then we need to like in the previous video show a little bit, you know, how to extract you now different blocks and so on. So we're going to redo it here. And the first step now, now that remember we have a parallel solution, decompose case, and there you go. We access the decompose case. So remember that we have different regions in this case, three component meshes. So access there, that pattern there, you have a uh, son ID. So but, 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 always access the cell center value, okay? It's very important. And I want Sun ID zero, which will correspond to the background mesh. So as you look here, see that you have the background mesh. So if you want to see the cell types, you have it there. And remember that we have three main main cell cell types. So later we're going to see what are the cell types also influent. So you have zero, which is the calculated, then one, which is the interpolated, where all the interpolation happens between component meshes, and then two, you have here into uh the holes. Okay, so let's now extract another region. So select there. And this time I want to extract region one. So remember I mentioned it's very important. You need to know what is the ID that you give. So we have region one there. Always the, this issue that let me go back here that sometimes you have it over the other, so it's tricky to visualize. So there, there is an option in part of you to avoid this one. I don't recall, but in any case, what I would like to you to do here, usually that only happens in 2D. It's just shift it a little bit there and see that now, as you want to restrict this one, usually X, Y, there is no problem. Okay, so let me hide the mesh also here. And now see that you have here your salt types, everything very cool, very nice. And now let's do, okay, the other extraction, which corresponds to the cylinder. So here you go, so an ID, um, put it to there, and there you go. You have the three main regions. Let me shift this one as well. So this will be four and cell types, and there you go interpolation interpolation and remember this wall it will cut a hole here a hole here and then this is not the best chimera hole but it works much better than what was previously in open foot instead fluid will compute something way much better but it's still this one it works it's okay so this is what we have and now we can do another threshold the other threshold that you apply here let me hide this one and this one you go here and this one, you can use it to remove the cell type. So we want to remove the hole. So basically you want to remove the hole just to show you that is you want to visualize this one, see that you have here that hole now. So just, I would say it's aesthetic a little bit. And so bam, 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 is this one? Yeah, threshold over threshold, cell type. And I need to remove holes R2. Or ba, 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 ba. no, I need to keep that one. So you put it like this, and you keep the holder. So see that you remove this holder, and let me keep this cell type there. So you have calculated, and see that interpolation region. Okay. So now let's do the other here. Cell type. Let's see that here you have the same. Let me keep those. Uh, this one, okay, as it is a new one, you need to shift it also here, translate it, and I put it there, so type, and see that you have interpolation regions here and here, and see that now here you see better that there are many interpolation regions where all the 
information is happen is passed from one to the other. So there is a lot of communication there. So that is the overhead that I talk about now, that interpolation. And then the final one, which is the CD in there, we don't need to put a threshold, but it's the one you put it. Now you have already there zero and one, you don't have any hole there, but let's put it now just to have something nicer following now the same workflow. Okay. And this one also I need to move it here by a factor of four. And there you go. Cell types, beautiful mesh you have there. So this is how the post-processing is done. Uh, it's pretty much also with Fluent, whatever is the commercial software. So sometimes they may have a, a button that will make your life easier, you know, when doing this one and shifting and so on. 3D will be the same, but yeah, you have to be careful about this. It takes some time. So remember that you can save this state. So save this state, then reopen it, and you can reuse it in some other meshes. So let's do now, for instance, let's put the colors here. So let's put cell center values, cell center values, cell center values, and there you go. And let me add also, uh, let's add, uh, uh, uh. Okay, here we have the scale velocity. Let's say that velocity goes from zero to 1.5. And I press play, and there you go, the solution. Nice, I see that a oh, lot of interpolation is happening. Uh, just to go back there, let me go. Remember that we talk about the here. This is the initial transient. So this is some, some errors in the interpolation that we mentioned in another video that might, they are related not to the non-optimal chimera hole, but this one is a much better chimera hole. And just to go back to that. So this is a non-optimal chimera hole. So if you use that, you're going to get something like this. So look at that. There is some lagging in the solutions. Okay. So you have to be careful to have uh, something much better than this one. So this is your minimal chimera hole, but see that even open fun and fluid, they give you the same problem. But then when you optimize, you're not going to see any more that problem. Okay. So this is the best chimera hole computed now using fluent, but also implemented in, in open fun. But now using the new method in open fun, you can do it like this, which is much better than this. And again, you're going to have a solution no much better. So see that a lagging in the beginning, but then nothing, no, no, you don't have any more of this lagging that you see here, that it's, it's really bad. Okay, so press play and this is it. So then for instance, if you want to compute here in, in part of phone vorticity, some other quantities, it works exactly in the same way. So remember you do those operations here. So automatically you're going to have it, or you can do exactly the same in uh, using the common line interface function aggregates in open phone, nothing changed. So the only difference is this specific step to visualize now to look at the colors there, the nice solution. So be careful about that. Pretty much the same in 3D. It might be a little bit tricky, you know, because now it's 3D. Now, let me show you how I like to use. So, because part of part of phone is part of you is perfect, but sometimes you can have big meshes. So, the open phone format, I think, it's not the best one. So, I like to use inside files. Okay, so let me convert my solution MPI run for to inside format. Okay, and I like to use it either in part of you or using inside visualizer like I do with Fluent. Okay. So the steps are going to, to, to be the same with Fluent. So here I convert it to inside here in the folder, you have your solution and let me open part of you powerful. And to show you the, the main difference, but how you extract regions and so on will be the same. So you go here, access the data, this format inside is way much faster than the format the standard format of Fluent. So that's why I like it a lot. So then let me go next. Okay. Next. Um, here we have, okay. So the only particular set here is that you need to access. So actually I can apply it here. So an ID dun, 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 and you can start extract regions and so on. So you see that you extract it, but the problem is that look at that. You didn't have, you only have 
the arrays, but you don't have the patches. You need to extract those patches. So that is the step that I'm going to show you. You need to use a filter. And here, when you go into filters, there is one called, let me go extract block. I think it's somewhere ba -ba -dum -bum -bum -bum. here, extract block. And here you access all your patches. So, and this is where we come a little bit more trickier. trickier. So extract internal mesh. Let, let me extract. Uh, uh, uh. Then you can extract all other patches. So for instance, you want to extract you no know, surface cylinder. You have it there, but we're going to work just in this one. And in this one, now you have access to all the information. So you have the IDs. Okay. So you can go and do the same steps. You have the, that one there. Let me do another extraction here. Okay. I want this one. Okay and so on. Okay. So pretty much as we did with, with part of you, uh, the big advantage of this is that, as I mentioned, it's way much faster than, uh, than the for format from part of you. Probably you are, you know, that part of you, part of phone is very slow when you have large data sets. So this is the post-processing in open phone. Uh, now let's talk about post-processing in ANSYS Fluent and how I like to do it. So let's move to how do I do it in Ansys Fluent. By the way, it's not the best, what probably it's not the best way, but I like to do it like this. Uh, we're going to use uh, Insight. So I didn't, I, I didn't go into, into details with Insight with OpenFo because here we're going to see that. The only important thing previously was how to extract you know, the, the boundaries. <clears throat> <clears throat> So here in open phone here, as I mentioned, sometimes so commercial souls can give you this auction that you put it there and then it will erase everything and you are going to visualize everything uh, much easier. Okay. So this is advantage, but pretty much you need to go through all these steps uh, in, in open phone, but here that auction doesn't help a lot. You have it here in mesh because then you want to see the colors since get tricky, but how I like to do it. So I, I haven't talked about this when I address here, you go calculation activities in solution and you can automatically support the solution. So basically what I do before running, I select here inside case. <clears throat> okay. Then select the fields that you want to save pressure velocity. Uh, I like to save cell center data binary. is okay. Here you need to select anything. And then you look for the rest of the data. as well. as you see, you have a lot of stuff. As you can imagine, uh, with this over set measures, you have extra information. So like in open phone, you have cell zone index. So you have cell zone in the zero one, two here, here we don't need it actually, but I like to save it. And then you have cell type, uh, cell element type, this one. And this one is going to tell you, you know, like in, in open phone interpolation cells, whole cells and so on. So later we're going to see that there is a different discrimination here in fluid, but pretty much the concept, it conveys the same information. Then you save with a given frequency. So in this case I run, I save with a frequency of one second. So every second save the solution. Uh, and then, well, I like to say, put everything in a single file and that's all. Then you run automatically and you know, click okay. And automatically it's going to save that. Okay. So that is how I do is you want to reproduce this. You can rerun and put this, uh, automatic export, you know, function there. And let me close there. We don't need it anymore. I just wanted to show you that because now let's run, uh, open for, uh, fluent. So here I have already have everything. So it's going to save this file. This is the file that you need to open in CAS in in Paraphone, open phone, they, they save it with the format case, case, which is the same format. Okay. So pretty much they will have the same file, something similar. You can open it, uh, open phone case. You can open the fluent case with inside. There is no problem. So let's launch inside. So I'm using here inside 2023 R2. So you can download the student version and the video description, you, you have the link. So this one also will introduce you and give you more details about and say how to use it. So recall that 
you can open now these files with 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 uh part of you but also you can access and just to show you um bam 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 where okay now i'm lost into all this okay so this is the the open phone case just to show you that you can open the file uh, 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 you go here file open put it there the path and just click there so this is the solution of open phone and there you go you have the solution and then you do your post processing use away and so on so let me show you a little bit because in open fun uh, and let me hide here okay so you can click there on high on high that is the concept this is internal mesh and remember that in internal mesh you are going to have the zone so now you need to separate the zones like in part of you okay so that is another different that we have with 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 fluent that you're going to see so let's do something similar so for instance if you want to create a cut plane there let me do this one set and there you have a, a cut plane and then for instance here you can plot your solution so for instance zone id and see that you have all your zone ids and everything you have it there so you're going to do similar steps like with part of you but you need to find the equivalent function in inside so for instance to divide this one we can apply this one for instance i like i it's not iso surface it will be iso volume and I want to extract, for instance, son ID, son ID, you give a value here, zero, zero. Okay, hide this one. And I don't see it there. Okay, son ID element. And let me put here, let me see. Okay, so you need to give a little bit bigger so there you see that you have that zone and you can go on here and do the, exactly the same with the other so let's do 0 0.9 1.1 1 .1, and you have it there so as you double click here you see that you're going to have a similar problem as the one that you had in uh part of on that this are going to overlap and sometimes when you visualize you're not going to you it's difficult to to see which plane is in front of the other but i have to say that uh inside tends to do a, a good work you now putting the right one in front but see here that you have that mix there so here is you go into advance you will have something similar i think maybe not okay so you can translate that plane so for instance let's do okay so it needs to be the double filtering so since get a little bit tricky as you can see so let me apply another cut plane here uh inset there you go and i can go here and i can but 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 okay it's not this okay um turn back okay so there is an option you can translate it hopefully you get the idea and then you can come here and filter some id oof now this maybe it's a little bit trickier than and there you have and then you can let me add another one to do it kind of similar you know in open font you put it there and apply another filter here another volume this one so there are different ways to do this i'm using this one probably it's not the ideal one because there is another filter that probably would be more efficient than, than this one so here you can filter you know this one filter by element and you can give the condition and so on but that is a little bit more advanced, but there you have the teeth. Maybe you can look for the option and there you have. So now this one, ah, so let me see that somewhere should be an option that you can translate that one. So I, I don't recall, but yeah, you have an option and then you can do the translation. So here it's possible to do scaling and so on but maybe it might be better in this case that i have the cut plane so see that i put the cut plane there 
So let's move it to another distance. So the, my value in zero automatically. Another advantage that here automatically every single date, 0 0.5. And let me put this one in, in one. Okay, so should be okay now. Okay. So there you go. I move the pushes and now at this point, then you can plot velocity there. Okay. Give me a minute that I still don't see this one. Where did it go? Where are you? Okay. So this one, let me put it 0 0.9. Okay. I don't, okay. I don't see you. Okay, clip plane. So clip plane, this one. I put it in zero. This one, it is in set. So let me repeat this one because I don't see it. So I go here. I want this one in one. Okay. There you go. Ah, okay. I know. I know. I know. See, it's outside of the domain. So yeah, this one, I think it goes from minus one or minus 0 0.5. Yeah. You need to know your domain. So click plane. Um, you have minimum. Okay. Yeah. See, I was, let me go here. This is okay. Let me go here. This is okay in zero. Uh, let me go here and uh, let me put here 0 0.5 or 0 0.2. Should be somewhere there. Okay. Oh, you get the point that things are, are messy here. And um, oh, let me go and erase. And uh, let me do it again. So we go cut plane set to minimum. So let me put it minus zero point point two one plane there. Okay, so in this one I will apply this volume and I want zero zero point one. So now I'm extracting that volume and okay. And son ID, you have it there. I this one. And let me go here and another one. So I will put it now at yeah, that one minute will be zero. And then you go apply this. As I say, save might be not the optimal way. And it tends to be trickier, the open phone data. And son ID, which one do I want here? It's a volume I want from zero nine to 1.9. And I should have that one somewhere there. Okay, so there you go. And you keep doing with the cylinder and so on. You you, you have everything in the post process in pretty much the same. So this is for open phone. I let me skip here. I don't want to waste any more time because all the other steps you have seen those in the previous video with part of you different graphical user interface. So now let me move with uh with fluent because the data is slightly different and let me replace that case there. And I want to read the data here and here you click in, in cast and it will read everything. And this is what you have. So remember how we set up this case in Fluent that you have Fluent 111, all this information now is safe. So in theory here now, you don't need to extract sounds because already you know your different sounds now. So you know that back. Okay. So let me hide everything. So ba -ba 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 here in the eyeball. So this one correspond to background, back one to this one. So big advantage 
doing it you need to do that extraction that we got lost previously with open phone so make it it make it easier but still we are going to have the cell type information which is the one i want to show you here so as you go here you have many information so see that i save the 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 cell zone id but we don't need it okay uh we need this one and let me go here because as for fluent do not plot the interpolated solution plot the constant one okay the self-centered value and this is what you have so this is just background and look at the information that we have this is the overset cell type so fluent will expose more information to you so here what you have it is the whole as you can imagine this is the whole is minus two then everything from zero to two corresponds where the solution is computed however one it is calculated solution Two and zero corresponds to interpolation. So you have donor and receptor cells. So two will be donor cells. That is, these cells are giving information to another mesh and zero is receiving information for another mesh. Then you have minus one, which is orphan cells, cells that are disconnected that in this case we don't have. So that information is also exposed here. So see that here, you can see that we have a hole, okay, and then you are receiving and giving information to another mesh. What is that? The, the, the other mesh or component mesh will be this one here. So here, let me click here. And here you have that option that I can translate it. No, this is the same issue with the visualization like in part of you. So let me move it a little bit like 0 0.5 and see that. This is the option that I was looking previously. I didn't find it. Now, sometimes it's exposed, sometimes it's somewhere else. And there you go. So this is the other patch. You can plot your cell type information here and see that um, I think we're going to understand better since here now that I put it later. Let me move it more, put it to there. So look at that. Here you are, the walls are cutting a hole. So the wall is cutting a hole here, optimizing that, but also the overset patches, it is kind of cutting a hole here, but it's just to get the best interpolation, the minimum interpolation. So to see that we compute the solution here, you pass a right figure and you pass information to another mesh, okay, which is this mesh here. And this one is receiving information here, interpolation cell, okay, but also this one is giving information at this level to what mesh, all this one. When you overlap this, you can see that this is where you are passing information. The same stuff is done in, in, in OpenFund, by the way, but you don't get all this stuff. Or maybe you, you get it, I would show you, because you have to remember those debug auctions and so on. But here it works more efficient and much better. Then you have this hole here, and let's look at the, at the last one, this one, which is the cylinder. Let me put it here in four, and there you go. And let's put the cell type I'm pretty much the same. So this wall, the cylinder, uh, let's put here and see how easy it is to post process here when you have all those patches now. So see that, let me put this in there. So see that this wall is cutting a hole in every single mesh that intersect. And then it's going to do all this operation, optimize and so on. So see that now here, what you have is that this one is receiving information from this one here, okay? is receiving for all this fringe here and that information is received here and this one is passing information to the other level the level below and probably you can see grid priorities two one zero there is passing information to this red fringe uh, green fringe here this is a hole and so on so see that when we optimize or when through and optimize this hole here see that it remove all cells here so there is no need to interpolate solutions. If you recall the open phone solution and you want, you can go back to the open phone solution. You will see that open phone didn't erase many cells. So there was some, some interpolation going on there here to some other levels. Here, it will, the algorithm, it will automatically say, okay, I don't need this one. We're going to save many levels of interpolation. And this is what is happening there that interpolation and to bring back let me put now here the cell the the, the we can visualize the cells here the grid lines all over 
So what is happening here is that, remember I mentioned that this interpolation is not non-conservative. Uh, let me add transparency here, and that transparency will be here. Uh, put it there. And it's not conservative, just the simple fact that the cell centers, they are not coincident. And let me change here. Let me, let me, let me put it normal to set. Yes, a plus. Um, view, 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 perspective. Okay. And now go like this and look at what is happening and let's understand better also those standard practices see that fluent will give you much information so the best standard practice is that the cells they need to be similar so you have this cell here okay and this cell it is receiving information from levels below what is the level the closest level below will be this cell here closest level below okay so that interpolation that is happening from here, from these cells to this, is happens, remember, at cell center. So this cell center is non-coincidence non with this. And this is already military telling that this is non-conservative. If you manage to get all these cell centers coincident with the background, yeah, that will be conservative. And there are techniques that can out, kind of, you can do that, like dragon drinks and stuff like that, super meshes, that basically what they do is that they remove this interpolation region and they fill this region with triangular cells. So now everything in your mesh will be continuous. You are going to compute fluxes across faces because that is a problem that you are going to have here. Interpolate from here, here, then you remember that you have fluxes and those fluxes, how do you do that? So this is non-conservative. All those techniques that you see people claim is just to to kind of reduce that error. And we go here into the best standard practice in CFD. Remember, the finer the mesh, the better the result. Here you can clear, get clearly the idea. The finer this, this mesh gets, okay, the closer cell centers will be, the lower the error will be. So best standard practice, finer meshes, but we know that we, we, we want a compromise between computing time, resolution, and so on. So we don't go with very fine meshes. But what we try to look is that have similar volumes here and also explore your mesh, try to have things as, as, as close as similar. As close as possible, sorry. As close as possible, so cell centers are very close and so on. So this is what is happening in all this interpolation and all levels will be the same. So now this level here, okay, that you have is just communicating to this one, this one here. And then this one is just communicating to this one. Instead, if you don't cut this hole, then there will happen communication between this level and a top level. And that can give you problems to slow down things because you are doing more, more computations. Then it brings back the concept, how do you interpolate? There are many techniques. You can have inverse distance, this square, many techniques, so pretty much. It will do the same now. So sometimes those are part of those numerical tricks that you can put. So this is really cool how you can get it here much better information in, in Fluent, but the concept in OpenFOAM will be the same. Here there is a much better implementation how the hole is cut. Now creating the grid interface in interface or the chimera hole is a much better method. Also the computation of the chimera hole is much, much better. And also the exposed information to the user when it comes to its cell types is much better here. And there are many other techniques. For instance, it might happen that some takes some situations you can have orphan cells. So in Fluent, you will have techniques to avoid that one or to improve that and so on, since that are missing in OpenFund. But you have the minimum in OpenFund to do, you know, overset meshes with no problem. I have done very complicated things there. and just to, to bring it back you now, just to show you that this was done in overset meshes in OpenFund with no problem. So this is a real, real, real deal. Now the, mo the motor bag is moving, but the wheels also are rotating. And also this one was done using overset meshes in OpenFund. So there is no problem, but it's not an efficient as in commercial tools. So now let's go here and let's look at color. So uh velocity and you play here let's see what's happening okay so let me 
Okay, so now what is happening here is that I want to see velocity. Okay, I know what that one wasn't working. Put this one here, the velocity magnitude there and transparency. I don't want transparency. So there and the other one will be this one. And this one will be also velocity. And there you go. And let me go here. Change orientation. So I hope you follow now. You see that it, it, it might be a little bit uh, trickier to use, but when you get used with inside is my think what works much better than part of you much faster and also the data format is also it's much faster but yeah, it tends to be more intuitive part of you this one tends to be more powerful and there you go your solution beautiful solution everything done here so well you have that issue here okay now that is an interpolation issue there so again here i'm not cutting the hole so i should filter also by uh, by cell type, so I don't want so look at that. You have the hole here, and that is interesting. Actually, I haven't talked about that. So if we look at here, and I don't want the interpolated solution. So if you go here, palette, and where was that continuous constant? Okay, see that here in that. Here, the solution is not computed. Nothing is happening here. Just here, but that computation happens at the level now the solution is interpolating. And this brings back the concept that you should have matching meshes now as close as possible to have a, a good interpolation. So this is a good example here. This is not a very good interpolation. This ratio, that is, this is a typical ratio that you can obtain with the snappy meshes. They are not very good. Two to one is not very good for interpolation. So you should control that better. And then we expose also this one. So here is better the interpolation. Okay. So this is what is happening here this is how the post processing is done okay with inside or power view as i mentioned i prefer to do it with inside if i'm using fluent now i have more information then if i'm using open phone i have my script to to make things easier but it's still uh inside uh, i find it a little bit more, more 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 powerful to do this post processing especially as you have large data size data set it tends to be much faster okay so that's all for this qualitative post-processing, the colors, the proper color for fluid dynamics. See you in the next video. Bye.